Okay, so, uh, first things first, no, I don't know why everything is so much brighter. Uh, this is the exact same lighting conditions, exact same camera, exact same capture software, uh, as you may have noticed from the continuing glitches. I tried different software, it only made it worse. So, uh, for now, I'm just going to live with these glitches. One of these days, I might have the money for a nicer camera, in which case, I will start using that um, instead of just a webcam so uh that all that being said here is jerry and the goddesses part nine we're starting to get into a little bit of uh adventure here so this is these this is uh this and the next two parts are a couple that i really like here we go oh crap i pissed myself again you can't really blame me though i mean i was tied to a broken children's school desk one of those ones with the tiny little chair built in. Gary, the last survivor of my protection detail, was too big to fit into one of the desks, so they would tied him to some pipes. I was immensely jealous of Gary. Here I was, shaking like a leaf, sitting in a puddle of my own piss with tears streaming down my face, and there Gary was, two bullet holes in him, bruises all over his chest and belly, stripped naked because they didn't trust him not to have a hidden howitzer shoved up his butt or something. And he was literally humming show tunes, nodding his head in time to the music. He looked bored. Of course, Gary was a veteran Green Beret whom my supervisor had called the scariest mf -er I know. Considering that John had worked on the so-called black projects that involved assassinations and kidnappings and other things that could cause international incidents if they came to light, that was a ringing endorsement. In our brief time together, I'd find, found that Gary actually reminded me a lot of Greg Allman the high school football quarterback who'd always been inexplicably nice to me and the other nerds. He was just kind of bro -y, friendly and always joking around, never taking anything too seriously. Meanwhile, there was me, bawling and sobbing and pissing my pants. They hadn't bothered to strip me because they knew they didn't have to. I was on my first field assignment, something which I'd begged and pleaded not to have to do. But my bosses were insistent that my talents were wasted behind a desk, an assessment so asinine and devoid of logic that the realization sunk in right then and there. That spooky spy agency or not, I was still working for the government. And so they'd shunted me off to John, a guy who looked almost as tough and worldly as Gary did. Apparently, field work involved lots and lots of people skills, which was never my strong suit. But at least I spoke the languages. Pashto and Dari were my most recent acquisitions. I'd picked them up specifically for my new career as a spy. And they made numbers 15 and 16 out of 17. And Anna had uh, since taught me an ancient Persian dialect that would help me in my side hustle as an actual historian. Something which had delighted Sarissa to no end. So I'd spent three weeks sitting at John's elbow as he drove around with Gary and Tim the late remainder of our protection detail, having conversations with a random assortment of people in Kandahar. I listened to how he handled them, but more importantly, I listened to what they said to each other in their own language, thinking we couldn't understand. It was supposed to be a four-week posting for me, but it was looking more and more like it was going to be a permanent one. John and Tim were dead. The sight of their bodies had frozen me in place and then left me retching up my breakfast. I'd woken up to gunfire and shouting this morning, glad I'd slept in my clothes from the day before. I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I ran to the back door, accompanied by Gary, who'd appeared wearing the body armor and carrying the guns and knives and whatnot that he called his battle rattle, and tried to make my way to the car in the alley with the keys hidden under the seat. Two masked men had been just outside that door, and they shot Gary multiple times. He shot one of them right back, but then he stumbled and fell. The guy Gary had shot didn't make it, and the other guy took it out on Gary with a couple of kicks after taking his gun. More masked men appeared from the mouth of the alley, all speaking Pashtun as they discussed what to do with us. Eventually, they decided to sell us to some Taliban guy. The part of my brain that remembered all my spook training noted the guy's name and that these folks weren't Taliban themselves. The rest of my brain wailed and pissed itself and cried and begged for my life. So they brought us here, an abandoned school somewhere on the outskirts of the city, I assumed. I couldn't be sure because they had put a bag over my head. It smelled like vomit, and I quickly learned why as I added to the smell. After a few minutes of being left to our own devices, I began to talk to myself. 
I'm gonna die. We're both gonna die. They're gonna kill us. Gary gave me a moment to get it out of my system, then chimed in. Relax, Jerry. If they was gonna kill us, they'd have done it already. It's not so bad. There's a nice breeze from the window, see? I looked at him like he was a madman. It's not so bad. Not so bad. Gary, we're tied up in an abandoned school in the middle of fucking Afghanistan, and Tim and John are dead, and I've pissed myself I don't even know how many times, and I have vomit on my face from that disgusting bag, and you've been shot twice, and you're naked, and we're both gonna die. Gary laughed. <laughs> oh, ye little faith. Both of these holes are from over-penetrations. See how they're not even bleeding very much? It's not because I ain't got time to bleed, even though I don't. It's because my armor slowed the bullets down and deformed them, and then my rib cage stopped them. I'm like 90-95% effective, and I've killed more fellers like these dudes than I can remember. Besides, he continued, when I didn't respond with anything more coherent than more blubbering, I have a secret weapon. I looked him up and down, hope beginning to swell. Really? Please tell me it's a panic button that will send a team of Navy SEALs or something to come rescue us. Nope. It's even better than that. He worked his hands for a minute, and I saw blood trickle down his arms. After enough fidgeting to make me really start to feel squeamish about the blood, he said, Ta-da! and showed me what he had. It was half of a safety razor. What the fuck is that? I asked, my panic returning in full. It's a key to the locks that bind us, buddy. He began sawing at the rope, securing him to the pipes. Now, what I need to know, Jerry, is what you can contribute to our escape efforts. Go ahead and assume I've got all the shooting and killing under wraps. What can you add? I thought about it. I really wish I hadn't insisted that Sarissa and Anna had stayed behind to look after my parents and my new baby brother. If I could get one of them here. I looked around for books or any other symbol of knowledge. Of course, there was nothing. For fuck's sake, we were in a school. There should be something. But no, I saw nothing but bare walls and broken desks and trash. Of course, Sarissa wasn't my only option. She wasn't even really the best option for a rescue. Uh, if you untie me, I can, uh, well, well, I can masturbate and... Nope, Gary said forcefully. No, -uh, Jerry. When we get out of here, if you want to lay in your bed and picture me in all my naked glory while you tug your tadpole, you have my blessings. But there ain't no way in hell you're doing it right in front of me, no matter how stressed out you are right now, okay? No, it's not like that. I, I was interrupted this time by a noise like my stomach rumbling. No, it couldn't be. I heard shouting and then gunfire. Screams soon joined the cacophony outside, and it was punctuated by an inhuman roar that sent a chill down our spine. Gary actually shivered. What the fuck is that? He muttered as his hands came free. He looked at me and then froze. Jerry, you're grinning. You okay, bud? I nodded. Yeah, I'm good. Things just got a lot better. I tilted my head in the direction of the chaos. You know what that is? Yep, I said, relief flooding through me like a cool drink of water after being parched for days. Ixla Blottle. The End.